Hi guys, so today I'm back with another tutorial, this time on Vengage. And Vengage is a tool that you can use to create mainly infographics, but it works just as well for any other type of graphic design content. And if you're here just because you are looking for an infographic making tool, then you can go on and just check Vengage right now in the link in the description below. But I still advise you to take a look at this video for a bit to get accustomed to the interface of the tool. However, if you are here because you want to learn how to use this tool, then let's first take a look at some of the pricing plans that Vengage has to offer. You can use Vengage for free, however, this subscription plan is recommended mostly for students because you wouldn't really be able to use it for profit because of the branding that will be attached to each content that you create. This means that the Vengage branding will appear on all of the content that you create. And also, this subscription plan is just very limited. Then if you are an individual, such as a freelancer who is actually making money from his infographics or any other type of content that you want to create, you can try the premium plan. And for businesses, finally, you have a business plan, which is roughly 49 US dollars per month when paid monthly. But if you know that you're going to use the tool for longer than a month, you can try buying it yearly, for example and get a discount on the monthly price. Before you make any decision, you can just take a look at my review to see which one of these plans would be the right one. And then you can go straight to the links in the description bar below to check out the plans that you are interested in. So moving on to real action, I'm just going to show you some of the functionalities of Vengage as you enter the tool. You can first choose from a series of templates that you're interested in. And if you go to the bar on the left, you can scroll down and either choose an infographic type that you want. For example, a geographic infographic, a list infographic, a tutorial infographic, or you can go on and pick some other templates for other types of content, such as presentations, reports, charts, which is actually a very easy feature to use if you are looking to create a more visual type of chart, because again, Vengage is not just a tool for creating infographics, but any other type of graphic design. And then you have some other types of visual content that you create, including social media posts. Then from the Mind Design section, you can take a look at some of your previous work. Or some of the advantages of the business plan are the fact that you can save your own templates. Build a team. This means that people will be able to collaborate on a single piece of content. And even create your own brand identity. And this will make it easier for you to just find the right types of logo, colors, fonts when you want to use them in your infographics to just make them all similar in a way so that they all have the same pattern. Now I will show you how you can actually create an infographic. You just click on this plus sign and you will be directed to the recommended template section. And for this review, I'm going to just go with a simple type of infographic. Let's take a look at a process template. And notice how you have the free templates, some business templates and premium account templates that you can use. I have access to a premium account, so I'm going to show you one of these, a customer journey map, for example. And you can preview it before actually working on it just to see how it kind of looks like and if it's something that suits your needs and then just go on creating it. And you will also see the level that is recommended for you if you want to edit this template because some templates are more advanced than the others. And the thing about Vengage is that everything is very simple to edit and you don't need any Photoshop or technical knowledge for this. However, before creating an actual infographic, you need to take a look at some of the functionalities and this is what I'm going to show you just to get you accustomed to this whole. So basically, this will be your main workspace. And once you have chosen a template, you can edit everything on it. For example, just change the text, change the icons, and I'll show you how to do that in a while. And the best thing about the workspace is that it honestly works similarly to Photoshop, but in an easier way. For example, you can lock some of your items. If you click on an item, you can go to this lock bar and click on lock. And basically what this does is that if you will select other types of content, the locked item will not be moved. 
Moving on to the bar on the left, you can, if you have a business account, get access to your brand kit. And again, everything from your logos to your color palettes will be here. And you can just add some additional text. And it's just not all about simple text. You can get some more creative types of text. I'll just delete this and add a share button. If, for example, you don't like the little icon on this share button, you can just select it all. Click on ungroup and then you will select the item that you want to remove and basically just delete it. Then some other ways in which you can edit something that you've added include again locking it so that it won't be able to be moved. And then to make sure that you still have the same item, you can just group it all again. If you don't do this, you can then just move every single item of that specific button. And of course, all items are editable. For example, you can copy it and basically you will get the same thing again and be able to move it wherever you want to. You can move it to the front. This means that the newly added item will be on top of the other content that you've added. Or if you move it to the very back, it will be below anything else. Of course, you can delete it. And even if you have grouped the items together, you can still click on a specific part of it that you want to add it. In this case, we can change the borders width. Make it a bit thicker, maybe dotted, and change its color. You can change the text font, size, color, and anything else from alignment to line height. You can even add some lists and a link. And you might have some problems selecting the background if the item is locked. So what you can do is ungroup it for now and then move the item that you want to edit. Maybe change its color and anything else. And you can even add a link because this infographic can be interactive and people can actually click on this button if they want to reach a link. And then you're just going to put it all together again and group it again. Then we're going to move on to adding some icons. And icons are probably the main reason why people opt for tools such as this one. Because if you think about it, you do pay a certain amount of money monthly, but you can use icons and any other types of other content for free without having to separately pay for them. Whereas if you were to work without a tool like this one, you would have to individually buy a set of icons. And let's try to replace the icons that we already have on our template. What you can do is that you can just search for whatever you want to add to your existing infographic and you can opt for colored icons if you'd like it to be more colorful or for monochromatic icons. I'll just grab one of these this time and basically you just drag it and you can obviously change its color. But if you don't really have any inspiration, you can just go and look through these already sorted categories. And if you do find an icon that you like, you can just click on it and add it to your favorites and then you will find it in this My Favorites section. The only problem with these colored icons is that, let's say that you select a colored icon, for example this B, you won't really be able to change its colors. For example, obviously his body is going to remain yellow. So the only way for you to kind of personalize your icons in the color that you want is by choosing a monochromatic icon. Now I'm just going to remove part of what's already on my infographic because I need some empty space to show you some of the other functionalities. And basically the way in which you can delete only a part of what you've created is by selecting exactly the items that you want to remove. And if you have an item that is locked, you can just click on it and delete it without having to unlock it first. So next I'm going to show you another sought after functionality and that is creating charts. Basically you are going to have a series of different charts to choose from, from simple bar charts to more interactive icon charts. And basically how this works is that you just double click on any chart that you'd like and a spreadsheet will appear where you can change the data and it will automatically change itself in the graphic part. And I'll just make some more changes. And you can even change the chart style to suit your needs. But if you realize that you don't really like this type of chart, you can just go on and change the chart type, for example, to a bubble type of chart. And the thing is that the data will remain the same as you have set in the spreadsheet. And obviously, you can just change the colors of the bars according to your own needs. 
Then we have icon charts and basically how this charts template works is that it tells you how you can create a similar chart and how this works is that you can select any other type of icon and pick a percent from the menu bar and basically it fills itself automatically. And then you are going to take this same percent and add it onto your chart. And basically this will be your final result and you can select it and group it and then you can just move it around wherever you want to. Then another type of chart is the map chart. How this works is that you can select, for example, the map of the United States, double click on it, and you will get a list of all the states in the US. And if you have some data related to each state, you can just introduce it here. For example, let's choose California and add the 600. And obviously you will see the difference between the states. You can just change all of them this way. And their colors will differentiate the data from one state to another. And you can even enter the spreadsheet's URL if you have one to just not enter the data manually. Then you can click on settings and from here you can actually change every single color title that you're interested in legend and so on then another feature is changing the background color of your content in this case it's white but you can go with any other color the only issue here is that you cannot add an image as a background and the only way of doing this is by uploading an image and turning that into the background and i'm just going to show you how that is done so basically you can either upload an image or search for photos in the vengage database in this case, I'm going to look for a field and I'm going to search for a simple type of image. Pick the image, then I'm going to position it the way I want it on my infographic. Send it to the background, change its opacity. You can get a photo as your background this way. Now for photos, another thing that you can do is add image frames. And how this works is that you can add a photo first. Let's search for a person. Resize the image to your needs. Then you'll go to the image frames and from here you can pick any type of frame that you'd like. You have the classic shape frames and this type of frame you can use if you want to maybe add some name next to the image. After choosing my photo, I'm going to pick, in this case, a circle frame. Add the photo to the frame and that is very simple to do. You just drag it onto the frame. And then to edit the photo inside the frame, you can just double click on the photo and change it the way you want it to be. But if you'd like to change the shape of the frame, just click once and you can adjust the frame according to your needs. Then another very interesting thing about Vengage is making the difference between a simple icon and icon charts. And icon charts offer you roughly the same icons that simple icons do, but what you can do is that if you select an icon chart, you can actually show your data using icons. And in this case, maybe you want to show something like there are only 49% male babies compared to female babies. Obviously, this is not a true statistic, but I'm just using it as an example for you to see the difference between icons and uh, icon charts. And finally, you can interact with the final version of your infographic either by adding a YouTube video which people will actually be able to click and play. You can then add a poll maybe at the end of the infographic. And this is very easy to do. I mean, you just click on the poll and change its settings accordingly. And you have different types of answer options, question options, results options if you want to actually see your results in a visual way. Then you can add a form if you want to gather some emails or a basic table if you would just like to structure your data in a visual way but you don't really want to chart. And you also have the option to add a Visualize Me widget. And Visualize Me is a tool that allows you to create a CV or resume for yourself in an infographic manner. For example, by showing the languages that you know through a map or your experience through a bar chart and so on. And finally, you can just publish your infographic obviously after you preview it. And the way in which publishing works is that you basically get either a URL or a piece of code that you can add to your article. And before copying this code, 
you must take a look at some of the options you have here. I mean, you can have either a no border infographic or you can have a border for your infographic. Similarly, you can have a footer or no footer. And if you would like it to be an interactive type of infographic, please make sure you have chosen the responsive option because choosing the fixed one will not allow users, for example, to click on the links you've added. Then you can just also share it with others or download it directly in a PNG format, a PNG HD format, a PDF format, or an interactive PDF. And basically how the interactive format works is that you can actually click on the links that you've added or on any other interactive material and you will be redirected to that link. Then you also have some settings if you'd like maybe your infographic to be in a landscape format or if you want other sizes for your infographic design. This was just a simple brief introduction to Vangage. If you'd like me to make some real tutorials on how you can create other types of content, if you'd like me to take you from start to finish through creating an infographic or other type of visual content, just let me know and I'll make a video for you.